Because in the end, you can call this whatever you want, but it will be understood as a Deporting Vulnerable Children Act. Because that's really what we're doing here. And I think the chairman made a very eloquent case about how the children should be protected, but then at the end the chairman came right back to their parents are undocumented, and if they are, we should know that and they should be deported. We all know what's going to happen with vulnerable children when that happens. I don't know what the immigration status of a parent has to do uh, with their ability to raise a child or nurture a child or love a child. Um, I imagine that there are a lot of other considerations uh, that should be taken into. But I just want to say that I had a uh, wonderful weekend um, to all my colleagues. I was in Tampa, Florida with Congresswoman Castor, and um, I'm sure uh, uh, you all should know that we were in an evangelical church, a Pentecostal church, uh, and we were there with dozens of evangelical pastors. And what was more striking about visiting is that they have a, um, in the evangelical church, they have a refugee center in that church. Beautiful beds. My wife called me all excited. She said, honey, I finally, I found a place where they actually practice loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And I said, why, honey? She said, because the beds that the children, the refugee children are going to have, they're as good as the beds that our own children have. And the clothes, you should have seen the clothes, everybody. Beautiful clothes. Donated clothes. All brand new. Not hand me downs Beautiful clothes. And Tommy Hilfiger, and it was all in these beautiful color-coordinated color colors, right? So when the children arrive in Tampa after fleeing drug dealers and murderers and rapists, uh, this church feels that it's its mission. And dozens of other pastors and the, and, the, um, and the bishop of the Pentecostals came. And he said, this is a place we're going to protect the children. We feel that that's our mission. And, and, and it was wonderful. And so we spent that day on Saturday day and Congressman Castor and I, and they're getting ready because the children are going to get there by the 15th of this month to when they arrive in the United States. You know, that's really wonderful. I mean, this was a place that I didn't think a Democrat like me would have been welcome, um, but I was because we're in defending children. And then the next day, that wasn't the end. The next day, we went to the largest evangelical church, Pentecostal church in Orlando, Florida, and Pastor Mejia uh, welcomed us there, and he and the coalition are putting together eight centers to receive the children across the country. That is, their churches are receiving children with love and with compassion. And it was 3,000 strong, and they stood up, and they clapped, and they cheered the fact that this was their mission and their life. And I, I asked someone, well, what do you think the political persuasion of many of the people, the leaders of the church, and they said they're pretty conservative, My, probably most of them Republican, and yet look at how it is we can set aside our ideological kind of mm, framework, right? Our political framework and put in our human framework and be able to protect those children. And then from there, we went to see Sister Anne outside of, uh, of, of Orlando. And you know, in the meantime, I wanted all my colleagues to know that I visited a home on Saturday night where the farmers were picking, um, they had picked fruit all day, strawberries in Tampa, and there was a dirt floor, and there were two families living together in the same apartment. And I want everybody to know you're going to eat those strawberries. And I want you to know um, a little bit about the people. I think in America, we just don't understand that foreign hands are picking our food right here in the United States of America, and that they're living in deplorable conditions, and we shouldn't be criminalizing them. We should really fix this. We should really feel ashamed of ourselves that we open up cans of meat that we know we're processing meatpacking plants by immigrant labor. And our food, our lettuce, and our tomato, everywhere I go, I see them. But there were there people there in, Ta in Orlando and in Tampa working. And lastly, I just want to take the last few seconds to say, here's the wonder that I know that we're living, that sooner than later, we're going to come right back here to this committee, and we're going to write up a comprehensive immigration reform bill. We're going to do it, because there's only so much you can do. This question is going to be a key question that is going to be answered in the coming year by 2016, November 2016. Last, you know, you guys should have just taken the victory when the judge said that he was going to put a temporary injunction against the president's executive order. But yesterday, we received a greater victory 
We stood fast and we said, we're not going to deport 5 million kids. We're going to stick with President's executive order. And the President said he's not going to deport any of them. You know, we had a great victory yesterday. We kept Homeland Security open and we protected the children. Eventually, we're going to get around to protecting the children and protecting the immigrants. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman.